Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Clark, Reconditioning Manager at CFB Kingston. Today we're going to talk about morning movement routines. Starting your day with a quick movement routine is a great way to get going in the morning. Starting the day with some intentional behavior can really set the tone for the rest of the day. It can provide us with momentum, direction, clarity, and drive for the rest of the day. A good morning movement routine will allow you to do a total body check-in and also help mobilize your joints. Stretching in the morning, particularly dynamic stretching, is a perfect way to gradually warm up and awaken the body and the mind. As a side note, dynamic stretching refers to moving through your range of motion at a controlled speed versus static stretching, which is more when we uh, sink into a stretch and hold it for a little bit longer. Moving in the morning can help improve body awareness and reinforce some of those healthy movement patterns, such as engaging and activating the core. If you do have access to a foam roller at home, it's another great option to add into your morning routine. It increases blood flow, improves our movements, increases range of motion, and also speeds up some of those recovery times. Foam rolling can release muscle tightness and trigger points, which in turn can help prevent some injuries from occurring. So if you do have access to a foam roller and even a lacrosse ball, definitely feel free to add it in to your morning routine. Today, we're gonna go through a quick morning movement routine together. Uh, feel free to watch. Uh, if you'd like to, you're also more than welcome to follow along. First thing, before you even get up in the morning, uh, something easy you can do is focus on your breath. So just doing a couple minutes of some intentional breathing, taking nice big inhales, nice big exhales. If you want, you can place your hands, um, one on your chest and one on your belly. So let's say your right hand's on your chest and the left hand's on your belly. And as you're taking inhales, you want to really focus on having that left hand. So the hand that's on the belly be the one that rises up and goes back down. So that's really ensuring we have that deep, diaphragmatic breath rather than just a short movement from the chest, which isn't really a proper breath. We want to have that nice deep breath down all the way from the diaphragm. So we're going to take a nice big breath in through the nose. And then exhale. We're going to hold it on the inhale just for a quick second or two. And then exhale that air out. So nice inhale through the nose. As we inhale, really focusing on filling up that belly. So full inhale. Just take a couple more breaths here today. We're not going to time two minutes, but just to get the practice of that nice deep breath. Good. So after starting with some intentional breathing, we can get the body moving. So as we're getting up and getting out, we can start kind of head to toe. So maybe just doing some movements of the neck back and forth. Roll the shoulders, roll the shoulders forwards. And backwards. And then we can move the wrists. Some wrist circles, one direction. And then some wrist circles in the other direction as well. Getting yourself up, out of bed now. We can just do some push and pulls. And then reaching up. Down. Good. 
Good, and maybe then we'll move down to the hips, so getting some movement in the hips. Just opening, so bringing the knee up and open. Hold on to the bed or the wall if you need some extra balance here. And then open in the other direction as well. Off just with some ankles rotating in one direction, just in circles, and then go in the other direction. And same thing on the other side. And then in the other direction as well. Good. So now we're up, we're out of bed. And the blood is moving a little bit. So now that we're up and out of bed, the next thing we can add in here is that foam rolling and lacrosse ball piece. If this is something you have access to, then for sure, add it into your routine. If it's not, don't worry about it. Or if you just don't want to add this part into your routine, you can definitely just focus more on the mobility side of things, which we will get into next. Um, as I mentioned, the foam rolling and the cross ball is a great addition to a warm up before your workout at the gym. So definitely feel free to do it uh, then as well. For today's sake, we're going to go through a quick full body foam rolling session. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time at each part of the body. Uh, I'm just going to go through just more of an overview so you get an idea of what a full body foam roll might look like. Starting with the lacrosse ball on the floor. So bottom of the foot, we're going to stand on that ball. And then feel free to sit here if it's more comfortable for you. You're just going to roll out on the bottom of that foot. Looking for tight spots, maybe staying on those areas. Pushing into them a little bit deeper, helping to release them a little bit. And then sit, you'll do the same thing on the other side. Again, I'm not spending a whole lot of time here today, but feel free to spend around 30 seconds in each part of the body. Feel free to spend a little bit of extra time uh, on tighter spots. And then moving up, we're going to go to the calf. So you can use the lacrosse ball for the calf, or you could use the foam roller, it's up to you. The lacrosse ball, um, it's going to get in a little bit deeper, maybe get a little bit more sore, uh, just again with that smaller surface area over the roller. I'm going to use the roller just for today. This is starting on my right side, I'm just on the back of the bottom part of the leg there, so onto the calf. The uh, other foot is down to my right legs on the roller, my left foot is down, my hands just behind the body, and I'm just lifting up off the mat slightly so that I can put a little bit of pressure into that roller. And then just rolling back and forth on the calf. You can internally rotate here, inside, middle, and then externally rotate to get the outside. Looking for tight spots, so if I find a tight spot, then we can do some toe punches here. So pointing the toes and then drawing them in. Doing that a few times, help release that trigger point. And then continue moving along. And then doing the same thing on the other side. So just onto the back of that lower leg, to the calf. Internally rotate the middle. And then externally rotate, just kind of going back and forth there, getting all the areas. Looking for tight spots. If you find one, staying on it. Doing some toe punches through it. Release that point. And then moving along. So continuing to move up the body, we're going to 
go to the front of the, the leg on the thigh there, so the quad. We want to make sure we're not rolling joints, so we're staying on the muscle, so above the knee, below the hip, because that's the area that we're rolling here. Placing the roller down, starting just above the knee, elbows down to the mat, and then we're just rolling up and down the front of that leg. I'm going to slightly kind of internally rotate so we can get the out dryer and then actually rotate to get the inside. Just kind of get all parts in the quad. Looking for tight areas. Again, if we find one, let's stay on it for a little bit. Try and help release it. We can do some side to side movements over it. The other thing we can do is bend the knee to help release that trigger point. And then continue rolling. And then we'll just do the same thing on the other side. So starting just above the knee, elbows down, pushing yourself up and down that roller. Moving over the quad so you're getting all parts of the quad, looking for tight areas. Again, staying on the spot, you're fine. You can do some side to sides, you can do some bends, and continue rolling. Good. And then moving to the side of the leg, so that IT band area, again, above the knee, below the hip. Tends to be a pretty tight spot, it can be quite sore for some people, so just do it as tolerated here. Um, if the rolling over is, is too tough or it's too sore, feel free to just even set the side of the leg on the roller and come in those three different sections, so top, middle, bottom. Um, but just kind of see, see where you're at and see what you're able to tolerate for the IT band. So starting just below the hip, elbows down. The top foot, um, the knee can be bent here and the foot can be down, and this foot's gonna help to give us some leverage to push up and down the side of that roller. If we want some extra pressure, or some more work, then we can always stack those feet as well. And staying again on those tight spots. And then same thing on the other side. So starting just below the hip, elbow down, top foot, and down, or you can be stacked depending on wherever you're at. Rolling out the side of that leg. Staying on some of those tight spots. And then moving to the glutes. So glutes, you can use the crossbow, or you can use the roller. Again, the crossbow, smaller surface area. It's gonna dig in just a little bit deeper. So kind of your choice there. Again, I'm gonna stick with the full roller for today. So whatever side you're gonna roll, so I'm gonna roll my right side first. So I'm gonna sit down to the roller. My right ankle is coming up to my left knee, and I'm rolling. We can also just do some back and forth movements here. Kind of alternate. And then doing the same thing on the other side. So on to the left side now. Left ankle up to the knee. Up and down on to the side. If this is an uncomfortable position for you, so if you can't get the ankle up to the knee, that's okay. Just keep that foot down. Bringing that ankle up is just going to allow the roller or the lacrosse ball to get in just a little bit deeper. But go with what feels most comfortable for you. If you have a lacrosse ball, uh, a great thing to do to, is to roll the chest. So just with your hand. And then you can just do some circles to the left and to the right. Yeah, yeah. Staying on those tight spots. Same thing on the other side. And then last, we're just going to roll out 
kind of the mid part of that back, so the T-spine area. So we'll put in that roller down. Feet flat on the ground, hips down. Roller, I'm sorry, but roll over the shoulder blades. You can cross the arms over the chest here, hips up, and then all we're doing is rolling up and down. We're staying above the low back and below the shoulders, so just kind of stay on that T-spine area, keeping the hips up. The other thing you can do here, after you do some rolling, drop the hips down, bring the hands to the side of the head, make sure the core is nice and engaged here, and then just do some extensions over the roller. Sending back over, only coming up to that flat back position, and then back down. Good. So it's just a quick um, full body foam roll. Obviously there's more parts of the body that we can roll, but that's just a simple starting at the feet and working your way up to increase some of that blood flow through the body and do a quick foam rolling session. Now we're going to get into our mobility, dynamic stretching, range of motion part of our uh, morning movement routine. The first thing we'll do is a cat-cow movement. So we're going to start by getting onto all fours. Wrists are on the shoulders, knees are directly under the hips. Taking an inhale, and then as we exhale, we're going to start to round the spine, dropping the head down towards the to cat, and then on our next inhale, we're going to reverse that movement. So chest down towards the ground, looking up to the ceiling, exhale, rounding the spine back to that cat movement. Inhale. Moving with the breath here. Inhale for grounding. Exhale as we move down. That extension. Feel free to take extra stretches or pauses anywhere. You might feel that you need or want an extra stretch. And you can go for around eight to ten reps of that exercise. Same starting position, the next exercise moves into uh, upward dog. So, same setup here, right? So, you want wrists and shoulders, knees under your hips. And then, all we're going to do here is extend. So, I'm going to start with my right arm. So, I'm extending my right arm out on my left leg back. Maintain the flat back, keeping the hips in line with the floor. And then, coming back to that starting position. And then, moving to the other side. So extending the left arm out and right foot back. Nice squat back. Hips are staying pointing to the floor. And then back. Alternating sides here. You can move with the breath with this as well, right? So you can inhale as you're opening, extending. And exhale to come back down. Inhale to open up. And exhale back down. Again, take those extra stretches or pauses anywhere you might want to. It's totally fine. And then you're going to go for five per side for that exercise. The next one is a glute bridge. So lying on your back. Hands at the side. Knees bent. Hips down. All we're going to do here is press up through the hips. So pressing up, we're trying to create a straight line. Shoulders, hips, all the way through to the knees. And then coming back down. Lifting up. And back down. Again, breathing can be worked into this exercise as well. So as we inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. Inhale, lift. Exhale, lower. And we can go for eight reps of that exercise. We're on our back, 
So let's stay here. The next one, just to get some core activation, it's called a dead bug. So lying on your back. From this position here, we're gonna bring the knees up, creating a nice knee bend there, and the hands are up straight in the air. It's basically the opposite movement of our bird dog. So I'm gonna start with my right hand and my left leg. So I'm going to drop my right hand back and my left leg down, and then come back to that starting position. One thing we wanna focus on is having that low back kind of press down into the mat. So this is gonna make sure the core is engaged. Other side, and then back up to that starting position. Engage and strong the whole time. Again, we can move with the breath. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. And we'll do five per side of this exercise as well. If you're finding that it's too hard to coordinate the hands and the legs, which is we often see and that's okay, we can start just by having the arms up and just focusing on those leg movements. And then once you have that down, then you can add in the opposite arm and leg. Um, totally okay, so whatever your starting point is, uh, definitely feel free to just keep the hands up, work with the legs, and then work on adding those um, our movements into coordinate with the legs. The last thing that we'll do is just uh, from yoga, so working on just the sun salutation, so it just kind of puts everything together, gets the body moving, gonna get the heart rate up a little bit as well, kind of get some of that, that blood flowing even more. So if you have a mat, starting at the top of your mat, if you don't have a mat, don't worry about it, you're just you're gonna be stepping backwards, so just make sure you have it in behind you. Um, we're going to be following our breath here, so I'm going to cue you for inhales and exhales as we move along, and we're going to do two per side. So starting at the top of the mat, taking an inhale, reaching the hands all the way up and overhead, exhale, foot forward, reaching the hands all the way down to the mat, stepping back with that left foot, and then coming up to lunge, and we can bring the hands to the knee, to heart center, or all the way up and over. Hands flip back down to the mat, stepping back with the right foot, down and facing dog. Inhale forward, high plank. Exhale lower. Inhale upward facing dog. And exhale downward facing dog. Looking between the hands, stepping through with the right foot. Coming back to lunge. Again, knee, heart center, or up and overhead. Hands float back down. Stepping up with the left, inhale all the way up and overhead. Exhale, sit to chair. Inhale up. Exhale, pull forward. Other side, stepping back with the right foot. Coming to lunge, knee, heart center, or overhead. Hands flip back down. Stepping back with the left, downward facing dog. Inhales, we slide forward, high plank. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. And exhale, back to down, facing up. Stepping through with the left. Finally, lunge. Hands go back down. Up with the right. Inhale, all the way up and overhead. Just for the sake of the video today, I'm going to move forward here, but continue along. Inhale up. Exhale, fold. Stepping back with the left foot. Coming up to lunge. Knee right center. Or all the way up and overhead. Hands foot back down. Stepping back with the right. Inhale forward. Exhale, lower, inhale up, 
and exhale down. Stepping through with the right foot, coming up to lunge, or overhead. Hands foot down, stepping up with the left foot. Inhale all the way up and overhead. Exhale, sit to chair. Inhale up. And last one here, exhale, fold. Hands down to the mat, stepping back with the right foot, finding your lunge. Hands foot down. Stepping back with the left foot, downward facing dog. Inhale, sliding forward. Exhale, lower. Inhale, up. And exhale, back to downward. Stepping through with the left. Coming up to lunge. Hands foot down. Stepping up with the right. Inhale all the way up and overhead. Exhale, sit to chair. Inhale up. And then you can just take an exhale as you put the hands back down alongside the body. Good. And that finishes up our quick morning movement routine. Getting up and moving does not mean it has to be a hard workout first thing in the morning. It can simply just mean stretching and getting that blood flowing. When your blood flow is increased, your daily performance can improve too. You can experience increased mental focus, reduced fatigue, and greater mobility in the body. Thank you everyone for watching today and following along if you chose to follow along. For more fitness tips and workouts, make sure to check us out on social media at PSP Kingston. Thanks guys, have a great day. PSP Kingston, the health and wellness provider for the military community.